this is only, I think the third time I've been here in like five months or something. That's our coffee maker. That's our Marco. <laughs> Even kijken. Nou, dan denk ik dat hij nu kijkt wie er beschikbaar is. Good morning. Um, I'm about to go to the office. Uh, because I'm going to speak to Matthijs. Matthijs is a colleague, he's one of our visual designers, and I heard that he did an eye tracking experiment. And I find that really interesting because um, when I was doing my PhD, my PhD is in social neuroscience, so I studied autism a lot, and I know eye tracking from when I was studying autism. So when we when we analyze a face, we focus mostly on the eyes, because the eyes give us a lot of information about what somebody is thinking and what somebody is feeling and what somebody wants from us. People with autism tend to look at the lower half of the face and the shoulder. So that means that they might not be getting the right information in order to give the right response. And of course, that's very interesting because you can use that knowledge, for example, in treatment, um, in, in social skills uh, training and stuff like that. So. That's how I know eye tracking. I'm pretty sure that Matthijs did not use it that way. He used it for something else to improve our games. So I'm going to go to the office to um, have a little chat with him about it and uh, see what he found out. So I'm at the office or at the studio. I just realized that this is only, I think, the third time I've been here in like five months or something. It actually feels kind of weird to go to the office now. Um, it used to feel kind of weird if you worked at home for an entire week. And now it feels weird if you go to the office. But let me give you a little tour. It's very empty. But these... These are some of the awards that we've won. And Ranch has been around for over 20 years, so... We've actually collected a nice collection of awards. Game Jam winner, we have a Game Jam every year. This is Pin Pin. Hello. Hello. A game that we made for the Hello. 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 Good morning. That's Matthijs. That's the visual designer who did the eye tracking experiment. And this is our pride and joy. Good morning. Good morning. Our Hello. arcade system. Hello. We actually did a Tetris tournament on this. And I did pretty well until I had to play Henri. That's when I found out that you can use combos to eliminate your competition. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our compliment wall. So this is a game that we played in which we could give each other compliments for the work that we did. That's our coffee maker. That's our Marco. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of the studio is pretty desolate. desolate and empty right now. And what might also be fun to see is Perno to Perno. Now, for everyone who's my age, I'm 35, I know Perno to Perno. And I know that when I was younger, I watched it. And then I watched it again when I was older. And I thought, what the hell have I been watching? Because Perno was actually created by Marcus and Michelle, two of the founders of Enranch. And Perno, well, it's a little bit difficult to explain, but um, Perno made very adult jokes. Okay, cut, cut. Now, zeg, so kut was it toch ook weer niet? All right, and here we have Matthijs. Hello. 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 So I already introduced Matthijs a little bit, but could you tell me a little bit about what um, what what a visual designer does at Enranch? Because oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So you're the best person to yeah. talk about it. It's kind of broad here, especially in the studio, because there's not like a whole army of designers like in AAA game studios. Uh, what is a triple A game studio? Yeah, that's games that make like uh, the biggest titles for PlayStation or Xbox. Okay. Or anything that costs like upwards of a hundred million 
Not right. Explicitly. Yeah, we don't do that yet. No. <laughs> so what it comes down to, um, you work a lot with game designers and programmers together to create a product, obviously, and you're on the visual side. So everybody here does everything from animation to illustration to editing or actually going outside, standing on the set and filming stuff and actually integrating it in a game. So it's a lot of hand in hand. So you're a jack of all trades when it comes to visual design. You kind of have to be, here, uh, yeah. We call it T-shape here. Yeah. Just to be like an all-rounder. I think it's one of the core strengths here because, uh, especially if you're like in multiple projects, which most designers here are. <laughs> yeah. I think the highest projects I did at the same time was six or seven. Wow. It's kind of heavy, but. It's, yeah. So you, How do you kind of switch of, from one project to the other, though? It's kind of hard. <laughs> I can imagine, because you have to have a completely different style when you yeah, yeah. go from one to the next. All right, cool. So, comfortable? Good enough. I'm so comfortable. Okay, so um, in the introduction I said that you did an eye-tracking experiment. Yes. And I honestly don't really know what it was. I do remember watching it. I remember watching it and thinking, oh, this is interesting because you shared the link to the live stream. Yeah, yeah, the live feed. Yeah, so I watched it, but I now realize that I didn't really know what you were doing. So could you tell me a little bit about what the, how did you use eye tracking? What, what was the, the experiment about? Um, before I started, I was like, I always like to sort of mix between art and science that is basically design. Um, so I always try to look like, okay, how can we use some type of scientific approach to look at design, at least like try to validate what you're actually doing. Because if you look at design, um, a lot of it is like gut feeling and like, this is probably nice or something, <laughs> yeah. which, which goes to like a certain extent, but if you want to like validate what you're actually doing, I want to see like, can we use something to basically map out what people are doing? Yeah. Uh, so I looked at eye tracking uh, as one of the methods, it's just a method to test users. Basically. Um, I wanted to see, like, can we use like the subconscious of people? Because like, if we try to look at stuff, our brain is pretty weird in the sense that it's like in 13 to 20 milliseconds it registers something, yeah, and then a tiny bit later it sort of processes the thing, and then it already knows like a layout and things, and it already has like a picture of what it's doing, right? It assumes so, a lot. Yeah, it assumes a lot. So yeah. like, if you can use that in your whole design process, okay, if you know that if you design something in X or Y format, if the brain subconsciously is going to do X and Y, then you can use that as like a design tool. Yeah. Right? So I just looked at eye tracking as a method to see like, okay, how, how could we possibly use it to improve user interfaces of games? Um, by this is actually the combination of art and science that so. we talked about <laughs> in the introduction. This is exactly why we combine art and science to, to you know, improve the products that yeah. we're making. Um, I think it did help in seeing like where do people look at first initially, like at the labs. Um, did they play a game? Yeah, they played the Knowledge Knockout. Ah, Knowledge Knockout. Okay. The white label products we create for companies. Yeah. Um, especially because we noticed like okay, some patterns we ourselves find pretty hard to explain <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sometimes. So it's like how do people themselves perceive these? Or um, one of the things we tried to do last year was upgrade the visual design of the whole app itself. So it's like, did this actually sort of work? Did this get better? Moet zo snel je moet heel snel lezen en dan oké, natuurlijk, dit is een beginnerspelletje op een zeker moment. Alleen, ik vind kennis opdoen. Heb je meer heb je meer tijd nodig? Ja. Dan heb je meer tijd op kunt opzuigen en kunt of moet je snel snel snel. En eye tracking only helps in the sense that you can see like if they're explaining. They say like, oh, I don't, I don't get it. I, I don't know what to do. But it's like, you, you can't really. What do you do with that? They say like, I don't get it. They can't like verbalize what they're Yeah, what they mind. don't get, yeah. But if you look at the whole eye tracking, you see like, okay, so their eye jumps to this header thing, and then this image thing, and then there's like some animation thing going on, and they're missing the sort of core thing that we are actually trying to get it. Yeah. Get over. Which so is you like, got that yeah. from there as well. You saw that, that yeah. when they didn't understand yeah. it, that they went all over the place. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen play. Oh. Even kijken. Nou, dan denk ik dat hij nu kijkt wie er beschikbaar is. En wat zie je hier? Uh, ja, ik gok dat dit dan een naam is van iemand, Tuur. Dus dat ik dan gematcht ben aan Tuur. En dat ik, uh, ja, ik 
kan niet kiezen om te stoppen nu geloof ik. Ah. So at the same time, like um, we had a test setup. It's a bit like this room. So we had like a TV, a very big TV, um, where I was sitting or someone else from that lab was in. And we could just see on the live feed where someone was looking. And we had video of it. Uh, so we just afterwards would compare, like, okay, what they're telling. Does it come across with what they're looking at yeah. at all? Or are they missing stuff? And then you can see, like, uh, after, like, five user tests, you see, like, sort of a trend already. Um, so you can see, like, where do they struggle and, and why? Also visually, which kind of helps. And like, yeah, I can. Okay, I, I know this doesn't work now because they just totally miss. They're this. missing the real big button in the yeah. middle. So I, even though I like the animation on page X, it probably needs to go yeah. <laughs> because we want to get this across, and it's not helping. Yeah. So it was really cool to see how Matthijs used eye tracking in a way that I had never seen it being used before. Um, it's really nice to find out that you know you can use these types of implicit measurements to actually increase the quality of the games that we develop. So I think this really shows that a scientific approach to game design can be really useful. If you want to stay up to date on every vlog that we release, then don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to find us on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook as well.